Okay, so here we are in the next video that I'm making here. We're going to be designing from scratch a 12-hour digital clock. So you'll see here that I, I have this diagram laid out, and I haven't really named anything yet, but this is the basic um, uh, layout, I would say, that these the digital clocks take. So we're going to look at the first row of... Um, of elements we call them here this here oops that's green so this here we can call this the drivers now all, all of these this row here so all this way these are all drivers moving on here we can call all of these counters So what we see here is that the counters will be counting and let's just assume that you know we have some sort of clock signal going here and what the counter does with respect to the clock signal it's is that it's going to be counting in binary and so that's where this output comes from here and then that data goes to the driver this way here so what happens is the driver needs to interpret that and then it's going to output it into seven different lines which goes into the this seven segment display here that i have circled here so now we need we just need to figure out how to combine them so let's say that what I want to do now is I want to make sure that when my rightmost counter, so this counter on the right, reaches 9, I want to trigger the next one. So I'm going to have a line, something like this, and it's going to be connected to the next one. This is just a rough idea. It's not going to be exactly like this, but you know, just so you understand what's going on here. So what's going to happen now is that this counter is now dependent on the one next to it. And then what you'll notice also is that these then need to be connected somehow. And then finally, these also need to be connected somehow. We don't know yet, but that's what we're going to find out. Additionally, there's a couple of other things that we do know from the, just by looking at this. We know that this number here needs to go from 0 to 59 because this is going to be our seconds. And then this number here in the center is also going from 0 to 59. So this is our minutes. And then the hours, we're going to be making a 12-hour digital clock. So we know that this goes from 1 to 12. So this is the hours. So now we have a basic idea of, you know, the things that we're going to need. This keyboard keeps coming up. So what we're going to do is step by step is we're going to first design counter and then we're going to design the drivers and then we're going to change the counters such that this is performed and then we're going to repeat that here and then we're going to have to make another set of counters that perform this function here which is counting from 1 to 12 and that's going to be the hours so we're going to do those things individually and then in the end, we're going to figure out, you know, how they all go connected to each other. Now, typically, like, these connections will come from here. Or something like that. So, this is basically how, you know, the basic layout of the digital clock works. Okay, so now that we know the basic layout of the digital clock, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be designing the counter. This section here. 
and we're going to be making this very simple counter and it, uh, it's going to be counting from 0 to 9 so this is considered counting in decimal so let's go ahead and do that okay so i already have that like i already did this but i'm going to walk through the process of how to do it so if you look here we see the state table and we'll notice that we labeled it D, C, B, A, and then D next day, C next day, B next day, and then A next day. So this is the correspondence between the current state and then the next state. So obviously, if our current state is 0, 0, 0, the next state needs to be 0, 0, 0, 1, so on and so forth. If it's 1, like that, the next state, I want it to be 2, like this one here. So obviously this here is two in binary, so on and so forth. If 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 the present state is two, uh, I want the next state to be three, so on and so forth. And then you keep going up until you reach nine. So let's see what happens here. Present state is nine, and this number translated to decimal is obviously nine. But the next state that I want to happen is I want it to reset. So I want it to go to zero again, right here. So what happens is it sets the next state to zero and then it'll go all the way back up to here where it started. Let me draw it in a color so it's more clear. So it goes, the next state is now zero, 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 zero. And then it goes this is now considered the, the present state. And now it, it repeats. Just like that. Okay, so what we see here now is we have these all of these X's. And all of these X's are what they represent is something called quote unquote I don't care. And the reason they're X's and you know I don't care is because I'm not reading anything beyond 9. If it's 10, I'm not reading it. I'm not interested. It's not like I'm displaying a hexadecimal digit where it goes from 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, F. I'm not interested in that. So this is why we put all these X's on it. It simply means I don't care. Or rather, we won't be using it. So now we can move on to the the cardinal map so if you look here i already have the all of the cardinal maps laid out but you know just so we have an idea of how this works i'm going to go ahead and you know bring up this one so here we're going to be looking at a next date so that's right here So as we move along, we see that the very first one, right here, there is a one, and in and the present state is all zeros. So this is where this one comes in. We move on. There's another one here, and it comes from where the present state is zero zero one zero. So it's going to be zero zero, and then one zero, and there's a one here. What's next? We have another one here, and it says zero one zero zero. So we look at zero one, and then we look at zero zero, and it's right here. We move on. We see here zero one one zero. So once again, it's right here zero one, and then one zero. So that's going to be this one. We move on. We see here one zero zero zero. So it's one zero zero zero. Let me write it there. And then the rest of these X's here, all of these X's happen to fill out this column. So the the good thing about these uh, don't cares is that it's all the same for all the rest of the KMFs that we see here. 
it's the same for the B next day, same for B next day, and then same for B next day. So now what we do here is we make our circles, get rid of some of these arrows. So the way, and you, you should know how these cardinal maps work, especially when doing the shortcut. So this, this is the shortcut method of the JK flip-flops. If we have a 4x4 four four, uh, K map here, what we do is we look at the case when A is 0. So we're going to be looking at this row and then this row. And then it turns out that we can actually just circle the whole thing. So it's going to be something like this. This row, these rows in the center, we completely ignore them. So that's why we say JA is equal to 1. Because it's basically just circling the whole K map. Right? And then we look at the one that follows. When we're looking at K, we're looking at the case when A is equal to 1. So it's going to be these two here. And then what we do is we place a temporary 1. Or we, we, we switch states. Like if, if this is a 0, then we switch it to 1. So that's what we do when we look at the, the Ks here. We switch it to 1. And then we see that, well, right there you can do another circle. And just notice that we're completely ignoring the top row and then the bottom row. So what happens is we have a 1 for the K. So let me just get rid of these markings. And so that's how that works. Let's do one more and then we can move on. Let's take a look at um, this one. Because this one has a unique answer. Meaning J is unique and then K is unique. So let's do this quickly. So we're looking at B next day. And let me get rid of these blue lines. So we look at this one here, and then we see that it corresponds to 0, 0, 0, 1. So 0, 0, 0, 1, there, so on and so forth. Let's right here. So that's right there. Right there and then we notice that there are no more ones for the b next day there are no more ones here in this area and then the don't cares is it's basically just copied out like the previously so now let's do the same steps we want to find an expression for jb so what we do is we look at the case when b is equal to zero so that's going to be this row and then this row. And then the only thing that we can circle is going to be this one. So what we see here is that this is actually equal to why is it a b naught? Right, because A is 1 here. So A is 1 here, and then we know that on these two, these two cells, D is 0. But So, so what we do is we just represent it by a, a little knot right here. Let me just make it more clear. We know that A is 1 on this row, so it's just an A, and then D is 0. So then we write D not like that. So let's move on. So now we look at the case when b is equal to 1. So that is basically going to be this one here. And then we invert once again. And then this is 0. And don't cares, as, as far as the don't cares is concerned, 
it's still the same whether you look at the J or the K. The don't cares are simply just don't cares. So what we do here is we simply draw a circle across this whole thing. And we, we can see that for this circle, A is 1. So we write AB is equal to A, just like that. So then we do the same process for this exact process. We do it for C and D. And then we are left with these equations. This one, this one, this one. And then now we can move on to building the counter. Okay, so here we have our list of expressions. And I got them from the K maps that I did previously. So what we'll do is we'll use them to wire up our counter using the JK flip flops. So let's look here. Right here on the left, I have a screenshot of, of my of the, of the equations or the expressions that I need. So we see that for um, let me delete these wires. I, I want to get rid of everything here, so I do it from scratch according to the equations, of course. So here we see we have JA equal to 1 and KA equals to 1. So that simply means a logic high. So we can connect that directly to the VCC. So the VCC is our course. To move on, we have A, D naught, and 1 for the JB. So that's going to be for this flip flop. And of course, as we move from here to the right, this is the A flip-flop, this is the B flip-flop, C flip-flop, D flip-flop. And another thing is that the A flip-flop will give us an output here, and this is the least significant bit of our output, followed by the one that follows, and then this one here is going to be the most significant bit, and it comes from the D flip-flop. So it's the last flip-flop. So let's go ahead and continue with that thought. I have a I have three logic gates here set up already. And now all I have to do is wire them. And of course I already wired these flip flops. They're all connected, you know, how they should be. And then I have a clock here, 30 hertz clock. So let's go ahead and wire them up. JB says A D not. So I'm gonna be grabbing A from here, as this is the A of course. And then I need D not. So I need D naught all the way from here to the right. So I'm going to bring it out here and around. And then that goes into the J of the B flip-flop. So that's about here. And then the K of the B flip-flop is simply going to be A. So then I just grab it from here. So this is just A, as you can see here move on we have the a b and a b for both the j and the k for this c flip-flop so what we do here is we simply grab a here and then we grab b from here i like to say grabbing a or grabbing b because like we're fetching for these signals and when i find them when i find where they are i grab them with a, a connection and then that goes into my J of the C flip-flop and then K of the C flip-flop as well. So we move on. We see that JD requires ABC. So one would think that this would be like a three input AND gate, but what we can do is we can make use of this previous logic gate that we did here. And we know that this is AB. But we know that this output here is actually a b and it's what we need so i can grab it from here just like that and then it i also need c so c i just grab it from here and c is of course this output here and then the output of this goes into the c flip-flop the J goes into the J of this of the C 
or the D flip flop. I mean, so yeah, because we're doing this here, right? This is the ABC. So this here is the ABC, and then the K of this D flip flop is gonna be hooked up to A. So that's right about here. So let's you know take a look at this configuration. So we know that A is the top one, followed by B, C, and D. So this makes sense. So now I have this directly hooked up to a decoder and this decodes in hexadecimal, but it works for us because everything that's within decimal is within hexadecimal, but not everything that's within hexadecimal is in decimal. So I can use this to decode decimal as well. Let's go ahead and run this simulation to see what we get. So it's at four, five, six, and zero. There it is. So this is this works as intended. Let's uh, stop the simulation here. Okay, so in order to make a counter go from zero to fifty nine, it's it's first a good idea to make a counter that goes from zero to ninety nine. Right, because it's easier that way because we have one counter that goes from 0 to 9. So, if we want a counter that goes from 0 to 99, all we need to do is basically take this and copy and paste it. And if you look here, that's what I did here. So, in this situation, we have two displays, and when the first display, which is this one here. When this display reaches 9, I want the next display to be triggered. So I want it to be, you know, triggered to the next state. So if it's in, if it's in state 3, I want it to go to state 4. If it's in state 1, I want it to go to state 2. So let's say this play here is reading, goes, it's going from 0 all the way to 9. And then I want it to trigger the next one. I wanted to trigger the, this display to go to the next state. So then, the way we do this is very. Uh, we're looking at this input here. So this is the the binary input that's going into the first display. But when it reaches nine, I want to be able to identify that that stage, the counter. So then, if you look here, this is the. Uh, the least significant and then this one here is the most significant so the most significant bit of course represents eight recurring in binary and then the least significant bit if it's one it represents it's just one so if i have a digit if i have a binary number here that says it's basically one zero zero one that's that is essentially nine that's coming out of this binary number that is coming out of this uh, these flip-flops so I want to be able to identify that. So I put an AND gate here. So the output of this AND gate is then connected to the clock of the second set of JK flip-flops. So this is how I achieve the counting from 0 to 99. So I'm going to go ahead and run it so we can see what this looks like. So it's actually a bit slower, but that's because it has more components into this simulation. But as you can see just then, it triggered the next one. So, and there you go. So when it reaches nine, it triggers the next digit to go to two, so on and so forth. So I want to go ahead and let this run until we reach 99, and then I'll show you what happens. Okay, so here we are. We're currently at 95, 98, 99, and then zero. There it is. And then it starts all over again. So this counter essentially goes from zero to 99 and then it repeats. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to be able to stop the counter when it reaches 59. So 
if we notice here, these flip flops have a pin in there in the bottom here, and it's called the clear. So I'm going to try to make use of that. And so what I want to do is I want to I want to clear these numbers, this number specifically, when we reach six. So the instant it reaches six, it's going to clear to back to zero. So, so that that that's the difference between dealing with the clocks and then dealing with the clears. You know, the, the clear is instant. So, you look here. I I've already done the counter that goes to fifty nine, but I'm going to explain it here. So you'll notice that I've removed one uh, flip flop. That's because in order to express zero to six or zero to five, I only need three bits. So that's where this comes into play here. These three lines, these are what show the display here. So when this counter, you know, this set of flip flops and these lines here, when this reaches six, I want to be able to instantaneous, instantaneously clear the counter. And I wanted to send it to zero exactly when it reaches six, when it reaches six. So, if you look here, and this is A, B, and C, right? So A is the least significant bit, and then followed by the, the one in the middle, and then the most significant bit. So you'll notice that I'm taking the top two most significant bits. Well, that's simply because we look at this number in binary. Let's say this is 110. Well, that's simply going to be, you know, 4 plus 2. Right? And so that gives me 6. So if this is 110, well, I know that that's equal to 6. So, and, and that's what I'm going to, and that's what I'm inputting into this AND gate here. So what we see here is that, that the output of this AND gate is coming into this NAND gate. This NAND gate has this input, this input that comes from um, basically when the counter is at 6, and then this other input where that's always on. So up until the point that the counter reaches 5, it's still 0, but then it's going to reach 1. This uh, value here. So then what happens is for a very brief moment, this output is 0. So then it immediately clears all of the flip-flops, and then all of these counters go back to 0. So let's test it out. I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna show you a little bit later on around the thirty second mark or the forty. Okay, so we're at the fifty seven mark, and there it is. We can see that right after it turned, it reached fifty nine. It was gonna keep going to sixty, but then. This NAND gate goes zero for a very short time, and then it immediately clears everything that's in here, and then it goes to zero. So this works nicely, and we see that the counter is still working as intended. You know, other, in other words, when the rightmost uh, display reaches nine, it toggles the the one on the left. So this makes sense because this is how you count. And you know, this wire is still here, this still acts as a clock. And so on and so forth. So we're gonna look at this one more time when it goes to 59. 59, and then zero. So that's good. Okay, so if we go back to our diagram that we have here, we are finished with the 0 to 59 counter. That's finished. That's finished. Well, next in the list is going to be making this 1 through 12 counter here. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make another counter that goes from 1 to 12. So this one is a little bit tricky because you see the clear ends on these flip-flops just clear all of the entries on the uh, 
or rather all the values on the output, meaning it makes them all go to zero. But how can I make them all go to zero? Or rather, how can I choose which ones I want to go to zero? Because if I want the counter to go back to one here, because this is basically what I want. I want the counter to go from zero to 12. And then after 12, I need this to be one. So then what I can do is I can clear the entry, clear these flip-flops here, this one, this one, and this one. But then I can leave this one alone. So that means that this, this flip-flop here on the left will keep running. And if I clear all of these at the right time, what I'll end up with is a 1 in the output. So if I look down here, additionally to that, since I'm only displaying this on, on the left display, since it only goes from 0 to 1, I only need one flip-flop. So this is actually what I have set up here. However, it's the same condition. We have the AND gate here, and this is because, of, of course, I want it to go from 9 zero and then at the same time trigger this one here trigger this into one so that's going to be nine to ten so then let's look at some of these and gates that i have set up here so really what i want to do is i want to trigger a sort of a notification i want to know when i want to know the instant that this counter reaches three all right so basically, I'm going to be looking at the least significant and then the second least significant. So if I know that this number here is 0011, I know that I know that this is basically three. So and that is going to be going into here in this other AND gate. So what what I also want to monitor is make sure that I'm looking at the case when this is equal to one. So it's basically two conditions that I'm looking at. This one here is the case when the first display is three, and then this one is going to be the case when the second display here is one. So then if that is the case, then I'm going to be sending for a very short period of time, this AND gate is going to be turned on because this wire here on the left is VCC. So this is always one. And then when this AND gate becomes gets activated by this the one on the left hand side and then the three on the right hand side of the display, I want to temporarily clear it. So I want to clear the the leftmost display, right? I want to clear this one to zero, back to zero. But I want to clear this one, well back to one. So you'll notice that if we look down here, I'm sending this signal, this zero signal, only to these three flip-flops, and I'm ignoring this one. So this should effectively reset the counter back to one. So let's see if that works. Three, four. Five, seven. There it is. So when it reached, when it reaches the instant it reaches thirteen, it actually performs the clear of these three flip flops. There it is. Now, one of the the downsides to this type of design that to this design is that it's very rigid. And it's a uh, very um, set in stone. You know, there is no, I can't customize it. Let's say I, I produce this, I finalize my design, and then I have somebody build the circuit. There is no customizability in this design. But, you know, this, this works nicely uh, for the purposes of making a clock, because you see here it goes from 1 to 12. Let's look at it one more time. There it is. Okay, so now we look back at the block diagram that we have here, and we are done with making the counter go from 1 through 12.
now all that's left is designing the drivers this is the end of part one of this video so just to recap we did the counter we did the counter that goes from 0 to 59 and then the one that goes from 1 to 12. in the next video i'll be making the drivers and then i'll be putting it all together for the final assembly so i'll see you then